Can you guys hear me? Yes, all right, so let's start. Click the cut here. Excellent. So thank you for coming to the session today. This is a short session, 20 minutes. My name is Danny. I'm part of the Managed Instance Product Group. I worked on MI-Link, and that's the feature that I'm going to be showing today, which enables you to connect to a managed instance from SQL Server seamlessly using always-on tech, and then you can also go back, and that's what I'm going to be talking about. I've been since man with managed instance team since day one, so I've seen <laughs> all the life cycles of the, of the product development. If you have more questions, we can talk after the session about managed instance in general. We welcome very much uh, feedback of our product, so if you maybe want to take a picture of this, this is how to get in contact with us. Any questions, comments, product feedback that you have, we love hearing from you, and essentially, a lot of times, customer feedback has helped us shape the product, and especially what MI Link is today and what it will be, it really depends on the customer feedback. So we want, really want to build a product that's customer-driven, not something that, uh, that we imagine ourselves. So um, let's talk a little bit about Link Feature. Maybe some, some of you guys have seen this before, maybe not, but I'll want to make a quick intro. So we have leveraged always on technology, more specifically distributed availability technology, which enables connecting geographically dispersed um, servers, and that is necessary to connect something that is remote, or we assume it's remote, with lots of network latency sitting on-prem or hosted anywhere. So it can be SQL Server hosted in any other cloud data center or even Azure VM. And then we use the always-on technology to replicate the databases near real time to managed instance. There are several scenarios how you can use the link. One is to use it to offload read-only analytics to the cloud. Um, we have customers that do not want to migrate to cloud, and this is one of the solutions. How can you actually get, get keep running on-premises, get your data into the cloud, replicate it to managed instance, and use all kinds of Azure services. When you're ready to migrate, this solution offers the best possible minimum downtime migration solution because it is just a short failover. So that'd be quickly about the feature. Now, because this is a demo session, let's uh, look at it hands-on. So um, for the dis uh, disclosure, these demos are pre-recorded. So what I have here is I have SQL Server 2022, and we support 2016 and up, and I have database on it, and on the other side I have managed instance and no databases on it. Um, using the built-in wizard, which we built since SMS 18, um, I think, point two, you use the uh, managed instance link feature um, to establish the connectivity. It does the pre-checks, so you need to have always on enabled. Uh, you need, the database needs to be backed up. You select which databases you want to replicate. Then you need to log into Azure, but I was logged into Azure uh, earlier prior to making this demo, so uh, it, uh, my login was remembered. Now I'm choosing my resource group in Azure, and the list of managed instances that I have available to connect to is refreshing. It, this takes a um, a couple of seconds because I have multiple subscriptions and multiple multiple MIs. But once that list is loaded, then I pick MI that I want to connect to. Um, these are pretty much advanced settings. You can click Next for all intents and purposes, but these are advanced settings if you'd like to tune a underlying AG architecture, such as the um, mirroring endpoint, the connectivity endpoint, if, and if you want to specify or customize the name of the availability and distributed availability group. What's important to note is you want to verify that the IP address of the SQL Server is correct. Sometimes customers have two IP addresses or more, so it's important to select the one that's exposed to Azure, not internal one. We run the script. The script uh, first establishes the security. There are some certificate certificates exchanged, the public key, so it's certificate-based authentication, and then the connection is established. Here I run DMV on the SQL Server side, and the initial process is seeding. So like in Always On, we have auto seeding. We're transferring the contest of the entire database over. And depending on the size of the database, that could take shorter or longer time, of course, for 
couple of, um, for a terabyte database, it's going to take uh, some time. But then you can use the DMV to check when the seeding is completed. And one, once that is done, then every commit on the primary is going to be replicated automatically. So we can see here how easy it was to um, make the link. The automated wizard has created AG and DAG for you automatically. So it was all the complexity of it all was really um, uh, uh, automated with, with this wizard. Now that we have the link established, let's create a table on the SQL Server side. Then I'm inserting some uh, data uh, into those tables, let's say five records, like this. And then on the managed instance side, I'm going to check updatability of the database, and I see that this database is read-only, which is expected because it is a secondary and it has read-only access. And I can see that all records have automatically transferred on the other side uh, near real time, and that's how how easy it was. Um, once again, um, um, you don't need necessarily to have uh, AGs. Um, you do not necessarily need to have Windows Server failover cluster, so it could be a single node system with no Windows Server failover failover cluster. Um, this feature is enabled also on standard editions with appropriate cumulative updates that you need to install. So we support standard. 2016 and up, uh, standard uh, developer and enterprise uh, editions. Here's an example of what you, you can do with it. You can uh, run multiple links from different SQL servers onto the same managed instance in parallel. Uh, managed instance can host up to 100 databases, so that's your limitation. You can theoretically have 100 different SQL servers replicate 100 different uh, databases to managed instance. You, of course, will be limited with network bandwidth and latency. So that's something to, uh, to take into consideration. Or you could possibly consider a deconsolidation scenario. For example, you had a SQL server which has grown too large. Maybe you have just updated the hardware. It, it's completely bloated. And then you want to you wanna deconsolidate that, uh, that workload. It is possible to do, to do so uh, within across multiple uh, multiple regions, not shown here on the diagram, but it is possible to do read scale out, meaning that to multiple locations, meaning that one database could be in parallel replicated to two or more managed instances. So imagine that one DB could be replicated to different regions. So that's also uh, a scenario that we have recently uh, enabled. Now, let's uh, have a look at another demo. I'm just going to continue of uh, what we have built previously. So in this demo, is it, has it started? No. OK. So in this demo, once again, we have the same setup. So it's the same database uh, on SQL Server replicated to uh, a single managed instance. Um, and that database is primary, of course, uh, read-write, and read-only is the secondary database on managed instance. Now, in this particular um, setup, I have connected Power BI onto the managed instance. So this is a Power BI now running of the read-only database of the secondary in the cloud. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to SSMS, and I will load some more data on the SQL server side. Now, this data will be automatically replicated to managed instance. If I refre refresh the Power BI report on the managed instance side, you can see the change. So this is an example where you can still keep running on SQL server on-premises and have the benefit of your data being in the cloud and using all kinds of cloud services. Likewise, uh, just do that in reverse. I deleted the extra data that I have put in. And if I do a refresh of this Power BI, which is connected to MI, of course, the graph is going to go back. So this is just, sim just a simple example kind of to tackle your imagination of, of kind of possibilities of what you could uh, do, do with this. Now, when you're ready, you could keep running the link for as long as you want. It could be weeks, months at a time. Really, we do not have any particular limit. If you want to migrate to Azure at some point in time, then the solution offers a 
minimum downtime solution. It's just a simple uh, failover, cutover. So let's have a look at that uh, particular scenario with a demo. Again, similar setup, then SMS 18 um, and higher is required. We see that our DB is synchronized from SQL Server to the single managed instance. And then, again, read write database on the primary and read only on the managed instance. And we'll see later why th this was important. We run the wizard. There is a failover option with Azure SQL Managed Instance link. I choose the failover. I choose the database or databases that I would like to uh, fail over or to migrate. I need to log in to Azure. That is fine. I click next and then I choose between planned and forced failover. Forced fail failover is immediate Do and it really uh, it does not care uh, about data loss but planned manual failover makes sure that steps are taken uh, ensuring that there is no data loss. So let me choose the plan manual failover. We recommend that you stop the workload at this point in time. Uh, this is a cleanup option. We can optionally delete the AG and DAG that was automatically created for you. So this is optional if you want to keep it or not on the SQL server. And then there are steps that we execute. First of all, the replication is asynchronous. So during the cutover, we switch the replication to sync. And then once it's in the sync, we make sure that LSNs on both ends are the same. That means that actually the transactions have drained out. And then uh, we have three attempts to do that. Once we do that, then and once we ensure that everything is right, then we perform the failover. At that point in time, the database on managed instance is immediately available for read-write, and you can use it. You have hence migrated. Uh, at this point in time, you will need to manually repoint your application connection stream from SQL Server to managed instance. It is not currently automated, so we don't have something that would be like a listener endpoint for AGs today, but that's something that we are working on, and I hope that in the future we'll be able to offer such an automated option. But for the time being, it's a manual um, connection string repointing. Another scenario that I'd like to talk to you about, so I've talked about read scale out and creating the link and migrating to, migrating to cloud. However, there is a new scenario that we have unveiled with SQL Server 2022. This is specific for SQL Server 2022, which enables you to fail back. So essentially you have a DR, so you can fail to MI and from MI back. Why this is only available for SQL Server 2022, that's because MI engine is always the latest and greatest, and right now its version is 2022. And uh, you know that traditionally it is not SQL Server is not very good of downgrading, but only upgrading. So this is this is why this is only available for 22. There are two types of uh, we call it going back scenarios possible: offline and online failback. Offline means that you can take backup on managed instance, and you can restore it back. Uh, back of your database, you can store it back on SQL Server 22. That's available today, and that's in GA. So any managed instance worldwide that you use, if you take a backup of the database, you can restore it back to SQL Server 2022 for whatever purposes uh, you might need. And then the online failback, which I'm going to demo soon, which enables you to fail over back and forth, that's currently in preview with the signup. And for that, you would need to go to MI Link. Uh, page in Azure Docs, and you need to follow up instructions to to do to uh, to uh, to uh, try that. And hopefully, um, I think soon enough we're going to push that to open public preview. And let's quickly do the demo. Important thing here is that the compatibility between SQL Server 2022 and Managed Instance will be kept guaranteed for five years. The next SQL Server comes around, we're going to extend for every next SQL Server. We're going to have five-year guarantee of compatibility to go, go back. So, so that will give you plenty of time to plan ahead. And let's look at the last demo. This is a full demo of the failover back and forth between SQL Server 2022 and Managed Instance. We also call it bi-directional failover. Here is 
uh, the link that has been pre-established with our SQL MI demo database. Then on the SQL server side, I want to check that the database is read right. I always always do this to make sure which is primary, which is secondary. And on the managed instance side, it's read only, so it's secondary. Very good. And let's create a table on SQL server side and let's insert a record. Let's make sure that this record has made it to the other side to managed instance, which is the right hand side of the screen. Great. The record is there. Now let's go back to the SQL server. Let's insert a couple of more records, two, three, four, five. Let's make sure that works. It works. Five records on the other side, almost instantaneous. Great. Now there is a special build of SMS for all the participants of the preview uh, where they get the two-way failover option, which is shown on the screen. And in this wizard, we detect correctly that the SQL server is primary and managed instance is secondary. We need to sign into Azure. It remembered that I was already signed into Azure. I choose planned failover because I want to ensure that there is no data loss. There are steps that we ensure happen here. Of course, switching again from async to sync mode. Um, enabling required secondary secondary uh, required synchronized secondaries to commit. Essentially, we say that we will not consider a transaction committed on the primary unless secondary confirms it has been committed. So this really enables you to do a failover without stopping the workload. That's the, that's the enhancement that we made in this particular release. And once that failover has happened, let's check the things out. So on the SQL server side, it's read only, so it became secondary. And on the managed instance side, it's read-write, so it became primary. So let's try to insert some records on the SQL server side. We can't because it's, it's secondary, it's read-only. And this is good. This is as expected. And on the MI side, let's try to insert some records. And it works. And you can see that they're called managed instance. They're, in, they're purposely in the demo there. Uh, they're, they're called managed instance to, to know that we have inserted them on the managed instance side. Now let's, let's fill over back, run the same wizard. We see that the state is now detected differently. SQL Server is secondary, managed instance primary. Very good. We're signing to Azure, no action there. Let's do a plan failover, execute the steps. This is the cloud side now failing over to, uh, to SQL Server. All right, let's see what happened. So the SQL Server database is read-write again, meaning it's primary. On the MI side, it's read-only, meaning it's secondary. I will not be able to insert now data on the managed instance side because it's secondary, read-only. However, on the SQL Server side, I can insert records. And with this, I have shown the full DR drill, where I was able to uh, use SQL Server as a primary, then failover, use MI as a primary, then failover back, and use SQL Server as a primary. And this would conclude this, uh, this particular demo. Uh, here is the link to our documentation, uh, MI link. This is where you can find out uh, all the versions, compatibilities, what you need to install for SQL Server 2016 and up, what kind of updates. Uh, 2022 is supported RTM out of the box. Please do provide feedback to the session. And we're at time, 20 minutes exactly. Thank you.